Thank you so much for being here um, for this presentation on mainstreaming SDG sustainable development goals into a university's curriculum. So we are very happy to facilitate uh, this uh, with my colleague and academic uh, uh, Dr. Safira Reker. Uh, she's a lecturer in sustainable finance and a researcher on decarbonization pathways at UQ Business School. And we hope uh, this presentation will be um, as useful as possible. Uh, and I would like to thank as well uh, Jessica Leonard uh, for inviting us um, to submit an expression of interest on this uh, matter. Um, so my name is uh, Roxane Vallier-Brasier, and I'm a principal consultant on sustainability uh, projects and uh, the manager of the PRIME initiative. So PRIME stands for Principles for Responsible Management Education. And this is uh, an initiative uh, we lead at uh, the business school. Uh, before starting, um, and Jessica, if you can uh, move to the next slide, um, I'm um, currently based. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> we, we stole the chair. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. So, so yes. I'm, 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 okay, I'm okay. your neighbor. Oh, <laughs> it's very even full presentation. Um, so <clears throat> I'm speaking from uh, Mijin on Turbo uh, lands, and um, I would like to pay my respects uh, to the people past, present, and emerging. And um, actually, many of the sustainable development goals and um, their associated targets are relevant for indigenous uh, peoples and echo to their um, struggles and mainstreaming sustainable development goals in our curriculum is also about uh, acknowledging First Nations uh, development concerns and um, introducing indigenous knowledges uh, across our teaching um, practice. So this is not something I can talk uh, extensively about because I'm not a specialist uh, in this uh, area, but I encourage you to contact uh, Dr. Charlene leroy Doyer uh, on this topic. She's also working at the business school and she's a part of a broader initiative at UQ uh, that is meant to do this, indigenizing curriculum and using SDGs to do that. So if you are um, more interested on this topic, I really encourage you to, uh, to get in touch uh, with her. So today our presentation will be in two parts. The first part, uh, I will present SDGs, what they are trying to achieve, why universities uh, play an important part um, of reaching the goals, and uh, how we can approach this work of embedding it further into the courses we offer at UQ. And then uh, my colleague Safira uh, will take over and present some practical examples she's using uh, to embed SDGs into uh, courses and also the tool, the materials, the case studies she's been using. And uh, we'll uh, have a specific focus on one SDG, uh, which is SDG 13 on climate action. Um, because it's one of the SDGs that underpins uh, the, the success uh, of many others. And at the end, we'll welcome some, uh, some questions. Um, Jessica, if you can move to the next uh, slide. Um, so sustainable development goals, and this should be a little graph there, yes. Uh, so you're probably familiar with them. Um, so that, that's how they are classically represented. Um, it is a set of uh, 17 goals. And they were developed uh, and agreed by um, pretty much all countries, 193 um, member states in 2015. And they are part of the UNDP initiative, United Nations Development Program. And they are a universal call to action to end poverty, to protect the planet, and to ensure that all people enjoy peace and prosperity. They're all interrelated. Uh, and they uh, broadly incorporate uh, sustainability objectives for and to be achieved by 2030. Um, so this is there, there's a deadline to it, and uh, so um, we need to take action so that uh, we can we can reach that goal by 2030. The next uh, slide. 
Um, why higher education is important, why the higher education sector is important to engage with SDGs and to uh, do more in that space, and why also the United Nations need the sector to fulfill uh, its objectives. So universities, they can help because they generate um, the knowledge and the ideas to actually effectively meet the global goals. Uh, they train the stakeholders, the civil society, um, so that they are aware and they actually include uh, those objectives as part of what they are doing in the in the real uh, world. And uh, universities are also important advocacy uh, actors to um, really broaden uh, the public on awareness on um, SDGs. And from a university's perspective, um, it is a very useful framework to demonstrate impact. And we know how that word of impact has been on the front line for universities for quite a while and its stakeholders and accreditation bodies as well. Um, it can create new funding streams. For example, at UQ Business School, we found out that there's an increase uh, in the grants amount that research projects receive when they align with sustainable development goals. And uh, it is also an enabler for internal and external partnerships. Uh, SDGs do appeal to organizations and we noticed it really resonates with the industry. So organizations do want to engage on them. They want to join forces with universities on those matters. And so SDGs are kind of an opportunity multiplier uh, for uh, universities. And in October last year, uh, UQ became a formal signatory to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. And um, it's also aligned its strategy to the framework. And uh, they've, um, the, the university executive has shown willingness to play a more active part um, with, uh, with this work of embedding SDGs into everything they do. Next slide. So a more pressing issue that justify addressing SDGs in our curriculum is also that it's um, an enabler for the economic transition we need to mitigate uh, global warming and um, the passing of the eight other planetary boundaries. Um, so SDG 13 in particular, climate action, and actually all the SDGs that relates to the, the the biosphere are specifically important. So SDG 14, life below water, SDG 15, life on land, SDG 6, clean water and sanitation. Uh, so people in our core, really main university stakeholders, students, uh, whatever the discipline they study, they will need to understand why we need to transition to be put in movement and also to take meaningful action where they work or study and where they live or within their community. So, um, however, and um, uh, despite the urgency of taking action at all levels of the society, uh, according to a UNESCO um, survey, uh, which is uh, titled uh, Getting Climate Ready, uh, they found that only 53% of the world's uh, national education curricula make reference to climate change. And when the subject is mentioned, it's almost um, always given very low priority. So uh, to, to, to tackle this uh, issue uh, that again underpins the delivery on all the other SDGs, we need to equip our students with, with the knowledge, with the skills needed to address uh, those matters collectively, because they are ultimately the actors of tomorrow's um, eco economy. And uh, they need, they all need to understand the physical constraints and their implications. They need to be capable to mobilize um, natural, uh, human, social sciences, even if it's outside of their uh, core uh, specialty. Um, they also need to understand the, the limits of the models uh, we, we teach. And this is especially true in management and economics, but in other economics and in other disciplines as well. So to be able to take into account those planetary boundaries, those ecological issues. Um, they will also need to uh, be able to conceive strategic plans that are compatible with a decrease of our environmental footprint. And um, this means uh, roughly 7 to 8% of uh, greenhouse emissions uh, decrease annually. 
Um, so they, they will need to integrate uh, that into, into strategic plans for organizations and, and their, their place in the society. And um, they will need to be creative as well because um, we will we need to reinvent the way we do things. We need to reinvent our economies, our business models. Um, so they, they, they will need to, to, to be taught creative uh, skills. Next uh, slide. I'll briefly focus on the work we've done at the business school. Um, I understand some of you may not uh, teach uh, business or um, the, 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 the subject they teach may be really, really remote uh, from business and management, uh, but I believe it can be useful um, to, to share how uh, we've approach uh, this work of uh, mainstreaming SDGs, um, although at the business school we still have a lot of work to do. Um, Jessica, this is the just the next slide on um, SDGs in the business school curriculum. Oh, there's not, it's not there. Or... It's the graph, the, the, there's a big graph, no? This one? So it's not the SDGs in the business school? Uh, the, with the ah, oh, that's what that's the one. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not Jessica, it's Safira. <laughs> um, so before we started the project with the Prime Directorate um, at the business school, we knew we were already um doing some things uh in that space uh, we had some ad hoc initiatives uh, but we we wanted to precisely evaluate and map uh, where we were currently sitting in terms of including um, sdgs into our curriculum so we evaluated 93 percent of our courses and we found that uh, 25 percent of them were explicitly embedding at least one sdg 52 percent were implicitly embed sdgs and 23 percent were we're not embedding uh, SDGs at all. So based on this, um, we chose to highlight the courses that do explicitly embed SDGs in ECPs. So that's now the case. Uh, when students have access to those ECPs, they can see uh, what the course covers. Um, and we also asked our academics um, what they needed to, to be able to do more so that we can provide either guidance, assistance, resources um, moving forward. So I guess it's a good starting point uh, to, to think of about how your course relates to SDGs. And really high chances are that you're already somehow touching, touching on uh, those uh, SDGs in your course. If you would like to get uh, a bit more insights, uh, I can recommend a tool which is called Linked uh, SDG. If you upload your course profile, for example, and uh, you can do that for any materials. So it can be interesting to actually uh, do it for your academic papers or website pages or um, whatever material you feel is relevant. Uh, so what that tool will do is that it will automatically extract key concepts that are relating to sustainable development. And uh, also all the specific targets. Uh, so there are hundreds of targets per, per sustainable development goals, indicator series, and we'll uh, give you some insights on how uh, your course profile uh, covers those topics. And you will be able to uh, highlight that a bit, what you're already doing. So it is a good way to inform how your course covers SDGs, but it's also a good way to highlight areas that you maybe hadn't thought of before when designing your course or that you may want to explore and um, develop further. Next slide. So now to purposely, once you've done that, when you want to purposely embed SDGs more explicitly into your course, there are two main approaches. There's uh, rethinking your content uh, by taking a cross-disciplinary systems thinking approach. Um, academic disciplines, by, by the nature of it, tend to work in silos, uh, but to be able to bring uh, effective responses to uh, those wicked, wicked uh, problems we face. Um, we need to cooperate, we need to think across disciplines, we need to mobilize uh, system thinking. So it's important to consider how your course content sits, sits in a body of research 
and uh, learning that is broader than your discipline and field and outline uh, further how it is relevant to a healthier uh, world uh, more broadly. And the second approach is we're thinking pedagogy uh, by finding innovative um, and collaborative ways uh, of teaching and, and learning. So some examples now. And uh, next slide, please, Afira. Um, so there are many options. Actually, you can uh, tap into to embed practically SDGs into your course. Uh, and it can be through course design and pedagogy, it can be through lecture content, seminar, tutorial, or assessment. And it can be the four of, of those if you, if you want to. Um, so I'll look at the course level first. Um, and uh, I have a few good examples uh, I found um, when mapping um, our, uh, our courses at uh, the business school and also good practices from other universities. So for course design and pedagogy, uh, a, a good example I find and uh, a popular one is to co-design um, some learning modules with students. So that's what, for example, we've done with the carbon literacy program with Safira, and Safira will talk you more about that. And it was done through a UQ student staff partnership initiative, which is an experience that I uh, I really recommend. Uh, and it was it was really really great. Um, another practical exp ex example for inspirations uh, that I thought uh, was was really interesting uh, is from Melbourne uh, Business School, and they ask uh, they task their commerce students to design a financial literacy course for high schools. So what they called a street finance. And it actually ticks several SDG boxes. Um, students not only strengthen their own financial and communication skills, but they also uh, develop and deliver finance knowledge to the community. Um, lecture On lecture content, Safira will give you two examples uh, on this uh, in a minute. And for seminar, seminar and tutorial content, um, a good example uh, I found was that at the University of Guelph in Canada, all undergraduate students engage in courses uh, that are dedicated to the SDGs during their first and their third years of study. Uh, so they have a dedicated point of time for all students and as part of their core to look further into SDGs. So first year students participate in um, an applied case competition, which is called uh, the Great Ethical Dilemma. And then they work in teams uh, and analyze um, dilemmas and present their analysis and recommendations. Um, to, to senior industry leaders. So they also involve industry and real, real world um, topics uh, to work on. And the last one is assessment. Um, and actually some institutions now make a point to include um, assessment pieces uh, that uh, embed uh, SDG consideration. So, um, for example, at Deakin University, uh, the students uh, are tasked to evaluate um, strategies of Australian multinational organizations, and uh, they go to analyze real life SDG prob uh, problems, and then their assessment actually focusing on them, making recommendations, um, and uh, just analyzing and writing about it. Um, and they they ought to choose one SDG in particular uh, that they address and provide uh, a justification for why it's they need the organization needs to to tackle that problem more specifically. So I'll leave Safira to uh, to give you more details on how practically she embedded uh, SDGs uh, into her courses. Yeah, thanks, Roxanne. Um, so still very much uh, work in progress, I think, um, how I'm integrating the SDGs, but I started a while ago, but it was more sustainability, which of course SDGs is a framework of how you structure sustainability. So initially I had, um, it was more, more a module at the end. So it was, um, you know, you do the whole course, I teach introduction to financial management. And at the end, I had a module on 
corporate sustainability and sustainable finance. And over the years, I've wor worked from making it a sort of afterthought. So this is everything we taught you. And by the way, <laughs> there is sustainability and there are these things. Uh, we kind of, uh, or I, I kind of made it something that started at the very start. So I have something at in the first module. So um, I think you can still see, can you see that slide? So it's sharing the screen, I think. So that's my slide, right? Yes. Okay. So I can just, I'm just going to drag in here um, Pressbook. There was today a session on UQ Pressbook. So I'm sort of uh, building uh, my own based from an ed edge. At first, I've created an edge. So I'm just moving it over now to the UQ Pressbook. And so what I have in the first module is, first, we have some basic things of, finance, of, of structures of companies. And then I have a section on theories of business purpose. Now, in finance, in the first chapter, usually it just states the goal of the firm is to maximize shareholder wealth. That is the theory that is in every textbook that you open. But really, that's just one theory, and it comes from Friedman in 1970, and it's a little bit outdated. <laughs> so um, what I've done is um, I have more theories there, but I start off with the sustainable development goals. So I get them to think about the sustainable development goals and talk about, so we're just integrating the poll so it's not it's not all finished yet so but i asked them um here what sdgs do you think are important so which ones are important to you and i just categorize them into environmental social and economic and then you get a result this is not the actual result because from i think this is just a i don't know my research assistant created this but actually you can see that actually 95 to well, maybe 90 to 98% of students think all of them are important. So they all kind of think these are important. And then I asked them, which parties do you believe play a role in achieving the sustainable development goals? Then again, usually majority believe that all of these parties play a role. So of course here, businesses well, and, and investors as well. Now, interestingly enough, it's usually around, so most of these are above 90%, and then investors is usually between 80 and 90. And I find that really interesting. And I usually discuss that in the lecture, why people think that investors have a lesser of a responsibility in achieving the sustainable development goals than the other. So in the first lecture, I discuss also results that come out of these um, this press book. And um, then our, I ask, are there any other parties? And actually, and I put that in there because I just, a while ago, I, I had an election, it just kind of popped up in my head and someone said, yes, universities, you know, education. I thought, yes, that is a good one. So I just asked that, put that question in there too. Now, I don't know yet how to create a word cloud, but it was initially an edge, it was a word cloud and it would pop up on which other parties that um, uh, students would, uh, would think play a role. So this focus here on business, then I go on to basically explain what is different between a co corporation and a, you know, just a sole trader company is that you have the separation of ownership. So you have the shareholders and you have the managers who act on behalf of the shareholders. And then I explain Friedman's theory. So the dominant or well in textbooks, still the dominant theory and still what is, you know, in the real world, there are also still many Friedmanites, but also many others that think differently. So I basically cover different theories as so I have stakeholder theory, I have a shareholder value myth from a law professor at Cornell, and I have um, a, a paper written by Hart. He's a Nobel Prize winner in economics, actually, and he wrote something in 2016, and so I explained that theory. And so this gives them a sort of framework on how they see the role, how, how there are different views of how you can see the role of a business in society in tackling SDGs or just sustainability issues in general. Um, so that's what I start out with. And then um, I'm just quickly going to, to jump here to, so this first workshop I have is based on a real world case where I get them to sort of struggle with, a, with an ethical dilemma, which will touch upon usually multiple SDGs and then let them apply these different business, view, business views to this world, real world case, what the CEO should do with that. And then also let them make up their own mind based on these different theories that they have learned. 
So it really at the very start of the course gets them to think about, you know, what is the goal of a business and society? And then also how do you make financial decisions, which is sort of the rest of the course, we keep coming, we keep bringing back the concept of, okay, we discussed this, what, you know, how does, how do SDGs or sustainability or long-term thinking tie into this? So throughout the course, I have concept checks and ex examples that are also rather different <laughs> than what you would see in a classic finance textbook. So it's always, you know, you want to buy a Ferrari or like, you know, you got this much money from your parents and it's, it's a, you know, a little bit of a, yeah, I'm taking a little bit of a different approach to still use finance, but, you know, for example, you want to set up an education fund for girls in India, you want to like draw constantly money out of this to keep supporting the fund and you earn this much interest and um, how much do you need to deposit? So it's more, uh, yeah, it's it's much less, how can you say, lucrative or, um, you know, materialistic, I don't know, but um, yeah, than, than traditional textbooks. So I could sort of throughout the course with examples, uh, try to, you know, just make it more considerate of the SDGs. And then at the end of modules, I get them to think about what are the implications for SDGs. So for example, if we talk about uh, the discount rates uh, in finance or so the interest rate is which you discount. It basically means that, you know, we discount the future. Whatever happens in the future, we care about less, you could see. Um, so, you know, how does that turn into, you know, climate change or issues like that? And of course, because we discussed that at the end of the module in the press book, that also comes back the last question, because of course we cannot, the, the course is introduction to financial management, right? So we still want to teach them all the principles and all the calculations and how to do all of that. But we kind of keep reminding them at the end of the module of how this ties into um, sustainability or any other, yeah, any issues fitting within sustainability or the SDGs. So in particular in assignments, so this first one I say is based very much based on that first module. And then again, sort of towards the end, uh, so you have a financial analysis and then we bring it back to how do non-financial factors tie into when you make a financial decision? Because you cannot actually, you know, we like, of course, we would like to see in finance that there are such things as pure financial decisions. But as one of the theories say, you can never really uh, detach um, ethics from a financial decision. There are always people that are impacted by a certain financial decision. So it's kind of attached to it. So if we are in one of the workshops or assignments, um, we have a workshop assignment, we, um, you know, we value, we, we consider whether you should buy or rent a house. And then I usually have like different aspects of this house. So one is buying a house in a certain location and it's further from work and it has solar panels and it you know, has these kind of things. And then I have another option, which is renting and it has these kind of um, properties. So um that's one aspect and the second is i make i i um make them look up the different rates of different banks but also not only the rates but also let them think about which bank would you go with because you may consider other things than just purely the rates now they can be things that might not be necessarily have so much to do with sdgs per se is that it's you know good, good customer service or they have internet banking or or things like this but then i always have bank australia which is a you know a very um you could um i don't know if you could call it a sustainable bank but it's the only only bank um part of the global alliance for banking based on ethical values um so so i make them think about do you value this when you are borrowing or not because they often actually give discounts for if you have a a green, if, if you're greening your house or if you have sonal panels. So I usually tie this into the assignment. And then I, um, when I do share, share valuation, I always try and come up with, um, you know, a sustainability challenge in the sector. And it is, I mean, it is really easy because, you know, sustainability and SDGs has talked about so much right now in every sector, there are clear sustainability issues. So for car, car um, manufacturers, it's obviously going from internal combustion engines to electrical, and then seeing how are these different companies valued and um, how are they positioned in the transition to a low carbon economy. And then 
you want to value them financially, but also think about, well, which one would you invest in? Which obviously also depends on what kind of world you believe in. Um, so it, yeah, so really make them think uh, sort of in the process of the assignment uh, about these issues as well. And then um, just a specific um, example, I guess we, um, which brings in the UQ Carbon Literacy Program. So I taught into, uh, it was specifically a, um, a climate course. So it was uh, NGY7001, Climate Science and Policy. And um, it was kind of a last minute thing because the facilitator that usually teaches the climate science wasn't available. So I, um, and he had already all these amazing videos. So they kind of already had the science so we could implement some fun things in there. Um, so we trialed using uh, the UQ Carbon Literacy Program that Roxanne and I, and at the time, uh, Cleanne also um, developed. Actually, at the end, if anyone's interested, I'll let Roxanne talk about that, but it's sort of a short course, uh, eight hour course, um, which was, is offered, was offered to all staff and students. Um, and so I, taught one day this program into the uh, some masters for sustainable energy uh, students. And we used, um, and I also used for the first time a Harvard business case that uh, I think everyone at UQ has access to, or at least in the business school we have access to, uh, used the net zero simulator. And it was really cool. <laughs> so, um, and I think I haven't, you know, scratched the surface of you know what you can like do with it because there's a whole debrief and it's uh, there's a lot more to it that I didn't at the time have time to look into but uh, I did do it in a zero game so it's sort of like a it's a hotel and you get to walk through to simulate that it has to meet its carbon emission reduction targets and you can like adopt different initiatives and they all have sort of a cost or yeah a cost and then you also see your financial performance at the same time as well. So it's a really fun game. And then there are more actually Harvard business cases uh, that I haven't used yet, but I know there are more becoming available. And usually they're actually really neat um, that you can use to, to integrate uh, SDGs into a course that you have. It's often much easier to <laughs> just take a Harvard business case uh, than to develop one yourself. And what I sometimes do, and that also comes back to um, uh, what I use in my own course. In my own course, I in one of the lectures, I do a Harvard Business course uh, case study, and then I have an assignment that is sort of building upon what we er what we learned in the Harvard Business case. Um, so one more. Thing I wanted to mention is uh, how I integrated it into the UQ Student Managed Investment Fund. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this, but this is a fund managed by students at UQ. It's got around almost $300,000 in it, I think. And every year or half a year, we have a challenge where students um, apply and um, they kind of compete against each other to be the next team to manage the fund. And um, it has to have at least two business students in there, uh, but it's we are encouraging students to be included from other disciplines as well. So what I integrated into there, so I was the co-lead for this fund for a while. First, I was just a sustainability advisor, and now I'm back to the sustainable device, sustainability advisor, advisor. But when I was the co-lead, um, See here, I added something to the challenge to make the challenge evolve around a certain concept to every time, I guess, strengthen the policy of the UQ Student Managed Investment Fund uh, to become stronger in incorporating a certain SDG. And because my research area is climate change, of course, I <laughs> chose climate change as the first challenge. Um, and my first task was, okay, I asked the students how they would calculate the portfolio's carbon footprint and whether or not they believe that the SMIF, the Student Manager Investment Fund, should adopt the policy to decarbonize the portfolio scope one and two absolute greenhouse gas emissions or greenhouse gas intensities by 7% per year. So each student had to, um, each, each student team had to present on whether or not they believed um, this should be done. And um, 
yeah, and then the team that that uh, won did say they wanted to implement this. So then they are the ones that are going to implement this policy into the um, course. And then we also had judges. We always have judges from industry, but I got someone from uh, the Norwegian Sovereign Wealth Fund who is very familiar with how to do this. So we have judges in industry. Um, yeah, that can also check <laughs> uh, whether what the students are doing making sense from a real uh, practical point of view. Um, that's it from, I think, what I've done uh, so far. But even today, actually, when I was I was attending the um, uh, UQ Pressbook um, session, and I think there was someone uh, integrating the SDG, which is really cool. And of course, I haven't done it, but it sounded really cool where she uh, let the students pick a certain SDG to apply a certain concept on, and the students had to do a podcast on it. So I'm sure there are lots of people that do really great stuff uh, on this. Um, so here are just some resources you can use. Um, these, uh, just to point out here, the UQ Carbon Literacy Program materials, which is eight hours. It's Creative Commons, you know, you can pick and choose anything what you want from those materials and just integrate it into your course. Um, this net zero simulator that I said from Harvard. And um, Roxanne, do you want to point any of these out? Because I think you're more familiar with them. You're on mute. So just mute yourself. <laughs> Sorry. Yes, the first um, UCC SDG toolkit, it's actually a whole re repository of resources for uh, teachers, lecturers uh, that um, that university, I think it's based in Ireland, has uh, compiled. It's uh, You have access to it all. It's, it's open to the public. And I thought uh, it was really, really well done. Uh, we've put additional courses uh, that are also developed under Creative Commons that you can share. Um, Suli test, and this is another way to, to amplify the learning of your students is inviting them to verify uh, the learning they've had uh, on in sustainability. So Suli test is like um, a IELTS or a TOEFL or a GMAC, but uh, solely focused on sustainability uh, knowledge. And they can test themselves and they can get a little score that actually testify their learning. Uh, so I thought it was interesting and uh, also uh, document a report on SDG integration into curriculum with all sorts of case studies, examples of how, how other universities have uh, proceeded to uh, do this work of uh, embedding uh, SDGs into their curriculum. Um, yeah, I think that was pretty much it. We've included um, a survey uh, if you yeah. want to to click and uh, let us know what you thought of that session. We're happy. Thanks, Jessica. Take your yeah. feedback on board. Put it on the chat. <laughs> yes, I put it on the chat. Thanks so much. That was really interesting uh, hearing about this topic and also hearing some examples of kind of how that how you've done it in your course, Safira. Do you have time for like a couple of questions? If anyone has questions, yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, I'll give everyone a bit of a time to just think if you have any question, but I was just interested listening to you talking about how it used to be a kind of add on at the end of your course. And then over time, you've thought about how to integrate it um, yeah. further. And I'm just wondering, like, what kind of feedback have you had from students about doing that? And how have you, you know, how do you oh, think they, they like it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, students are really they really I mean, I still have a I still have a module at the end called Susta Corporate Sustainability and Sustainable Finance. And I've actually gotten students that are interested in just that topic, like su sustainable yeah. finance. And we don't have a sustainable finance course, but yeah, they really, um, yeah, it's it's really interesting for them to not just, yeah, to debate and to think about sustainability because they, I think they realize they are going to be impacted. And, and it's also, yeah, when you ask them at the start, like, the vast majority of of people think they are important so i mean mm -hmm. it's um yeah it's been um it's been rewarding uh to hear the feedback um yeah but it's it's been a long road to and i'm mm -hmm. still i still feel like i you know i have ideas of how to make it better but it's um yeah it's 
it's a lot better than it used to be <laughs> yeah it sounded great and also i can see obviously you're continuing to do work with creating the press book and putting all those different elements in there um and i really yeah, i was just interested in hearing your examples of how you can bring other elements into maybe a topic that was previously looked at very kind of the one dimension profit focused but you're bringing in these other topics to so students can think about business and future in a more holistic way I think that's a really good example for other people to, to see um and I think it's for sustainability mm -hmm. sorry go ahead no no you go ahead for sustainability it is very important I think the paradigm and that's what we also well what we teach them is also what they're going out in the world with right so if we teach them and we don't discuss look all business is about about maximizing shareholder wealth then they will go out with that idea and they mm -hmm. even if they feel maybe a little uneasy with it with things that they feel maybe are not ethically right mm -hmm. now they 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 know how to because i make them debate the different views and i make them come up with their own view so it also makes them able to talk to, they can recognize, okay, that's a Friedmanite. And I can bring my own opinion by talking to them. Say, yes, I agree with this, but, you know, so it's really that, and that's something that I had, I never had. Like when I did my degree in, in finance, like I was always like, but isn't there like, aren't we just making rich people richer? And that's what a lot of, because these are business management students, what they also come with. And it's sort of like, you know, it's boring. And, but this gives them like, oh, actually, no, it doesn't have to be. These are not students that are really quantitatively hungry. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they actually really like that, um, you know, debate it. And that actually makes them more interested to learn a bit of finance because then it's like, oh, it's not just about that. It's actually also because I want to empower them to, st it's still important to make informed financial decisions, right? Finance is also very important in sustainability. Like you, yeah, it's, yeah. And yeah, it's brilliant. And it's really brilliant. I think it aligns really well with UQ strategy too, right? And trying to kind of educate our students to go out into the world and do good things and not just approach things in kind of one way, being able to think across the board and you know become these critical thinkers that we need so I think yeah. you've given a really good example Erin I can see in the chat Jennifer has mentioned that she used parts of the carbon literacy to help with a database course last year all right yeah students developed a system to collect data for carbon emissions so yeah it's good that people are using these and we can circulate those links to all those resources that you mentioned after um and I suppose I just had one more question to ask you. There may be people in this session that have come along just to hear about this and maybe to um, provoke their thinking a bit about what they can do in their own course or their own area. And I suppose if someone is kind of new to this or hasn't made um, the SDGs explicit in their course, but maybe they feel like they are in there, they want to draw them out more. Is there a kind of a first step that either of you would recommend if you want to just take one small step towards doing more work in this space in your course? what would your kind of top tip for that first step be? Uh, <laughs> um, I, I think um, just to have one case or, and it can be a case that already exists from Harvard or you don't have to think about it with yourself, but think about something that is just, can see can be seen as a little controversial mm. in your course or can be seen as you know this would be this if this would be different we would come closer to the sustainable development goals so i mean for me that wasn't the first module and just talk about the whole overarching principle of what we do in finance but in other courses it may be just a particular topic Mm -hmm. it's hard because you know it's every every course is different of course but um yeah I don't know I would be happy to brainstorm with anyone if they have any oh. you know like. <laughs> yeah but I think even like looking at the different SDGs and as you've said you could bring it into even a first step could be like a discussion in class right if we're not yeah. quite at the point of putting it in an assessment or having a case it could be a prompt discussion on one of those topics or looking at something through one of those lenses 
I think that could be a, a small way to start. But yeah, I guess I'll just, I'll stop asking questions and check if anyone else has a question for you before we finish. Doesn't look like we have any more questions, but um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. And it was just great to hear about what work you're doing in the, in the space. So thank you. Thank, thank you all you. for coming and uh, hope <laughs> mm -hmm. you got some ideas to integrate it in your course. Feel free to yeah. reach out if you, yeah. if you need more information. Yeah. And yeah, I'm guessing getting... the, the presentation will be shared. Uh, yeah, you're getting lots of thank yous in the chat. So yeah, the presentation we can we can send around um, slides after with the links to the to the resources as well. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks. you. Bye.